Welcome back. This video is about whether or not it is a good idea to go all in on Palantir stock. So I'll address that at the end. But first, I want to give some important updates on ownership of Palantir, insider selling that we've had recently, my thoughts on valuation, and talk about the Wall Street reports that we have been seeing. So without further ado, insider selling, we have seen some of this uh, since the quarterly results, and I just want to make it clear to anyone that hasn't paid attention to this previously, is this usually does happen. But let's take a closer look. So these are all the insider transactions since the beginning of this year. So you'll see the transaction type listed in this column. And let's just start from the bottom. So Alex Moore, open market sale. Open market sale is selling stock onto the market. So it's the worst kind from a retail investor perspective. We have some other insiders with relatively small open market sales. Ryan Taylor had a pretty big open market sale, but that's because he was exercising options. And then an open market sale from Alex Karp, but paired with executing options and the same for Cohen and the same for Taylor again. And my thought on the whole insider selling thing is you have to take it from their perspective as insiders, which we talked about in the last video. They've been with the company for so long. The company was founded in 2003, right? It's 21 years old, depending on what month it was founded. And Sankar joined the company three years after its founding. A lot of these co-founders and early employees and now executives, have a lot of their wealth tied up in the stock. And so they're going to continue to take some of that out over time, <clears throat> whether it's by using the stock to pay taxes when they get options or just selling some of it on the open market. And of course, the question from our perspective is if they are so committed and they know the stock is going to be much higher in the future, why aren't they buying stock at the, or at the very least not selling stock? Well, well, the answer to that is they're already getting options, right? And that's just part of their compensation structure. It aligns them with investors and that's not changing at this point. Palantir does heavily rely on stock-based compensation. It's declining as a percentage of expenses for the company, but it's still a large amount. And so when you already have that as an insider, what is your incentive to go out and buy stock on the open market? Well, there's really not an incentive to do so unless you're trying to send a message. Now, why would you be trying to send a message? Well, you're trying to tell the market something. That enthusiasm based on a, a, a purchase on the open market, which we haven't seen any of in here, is going to be fairly short-lasted. So what are you really trying to do? You're trying to boost the stock for a temporary amount of time. The majority of their share count increase is coming from options. So why would they purchase more stock when they're already aligned? Well, I don't think we'll really ever see that very much. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on the subject. And now over to ownership summary. So if we look here on the short interest shares, we have both the historical short interest shares, which is just the number of shares, and the days to cover, which is based on how much volume Palantir stock is trading. So higher volume makes it easier for shorts to cover because there are more shares getting exchanged. But if there was a lot less volume and a significantly high shares outstanding held short, it would be much more difficult for shorts to cover. And of course, volume has spiked, which has led to the days to cover to fall down. But you'll see the historical short interest shares have not fallen as much as the volume has increased. So this is pretty interesting. We still have basically the same amount of shares in terms of a dollar value held short as at the beginning of 2022. So it has fallen considerably from about 170 million to now, what would that be, 115 million perhaps? But it's still where it was more than two years ago at this point. So very interesting, we're gonna have to keep this in mind. And it's about 6% of the float. So nothing too considerable, but it's still a good amount there. I'm not expecting it to drop anytime soon or for there to be a short squeeze, but I do wanna just keep that in mind and keep you updated. And back on this idea of the insiders and how much they're holding over time. We have seen it decline, but it is holding fairly steady as a percentage of the company due to the options grants that have been realized. So we also see institutional interest increasing over time and really buying up some of those shares that have been disposed of by insiders. So a really a strong trend here from the institutional side of things. 
especially towards the beginning or rather the middle of last year. The institutions were not behind on the Palantir trade. As much as you hear that from retail investors, they were not. They were a lot of what was driving this actually. And so they may have been behind on understanding Palantir in the past, but I do believe they profited significantly from it last year into this year. As for valuation, this is a very important piece that I haven't seen anyone talk about or at, at the very least explain it in a chart or a graph. Just take a look at this and maybe pause the video and think about what do these two lines mean? Well, I'll tell you right now. So the first line is, is where we are currently with the stock at about $25. This is a $53 billion market cap, market value. And below it, this is if Palantir did not have any stock-based compensation. And that's the effect. This is the gap of dilution that we have seen from issuing so many shares over time. Last time Palantir was at this dollar value of a stock price, $25, it was basically in this range over here, but the dilution has increased the market cap, which is not a good thing for investors, right? Just making sure everyone's on the same page here because it means you own less of the company. So now our market cap is higher, but our stock price, this is basically just the difference in, if the stock price was the same, this is the difference in the market value. So you own that much less of a percentage of the company. So anyway, the reason I bring this up is you need to look at where have we been in the past? How many times have we been above this level? Well, the answer is really just back in the hype of February of 2021 demo day. This is when all of the mean stocks were rocketing and Palantir was thrown in with that. This is when ARK Invest was booming and everything like that. And then, of course, we had the correction, the comeback, because Palantir really wasn't a meme stock, so it still held fairly strong for that period of time. Then we had our last break above this, and I'm not trying to get into technical analysis here. I'm just trying to get into the history of it so we understand what does it mean when Palantir is worth $50 plus billion. And so this was the last time Palantir was above it and around it. That's when the growth broke down, really. It was on the government side, the commercial slowdown. Uh, Palantir wasn't growing internationally, their growth, and this is, of course, when the SPACs were, you know, the big deal and the major concern and everything like that. Stock-based compensation was making them unprofitable. So that's what led to this real breakdown here. And I'm going to show you another graph in a moment. But I just want you to understand that Palantir's valuation really has never been above where we currently are for an extended period of time. And that would have been different if there wasn't a stock-based compensation factor. But take that as you will, right? I do think the company is stronger than ever, but you have to keep in mind what has the market thought was the maximum for this uh, stock's valuation in the past. And do we think there is, you know, a potential that we're in a bit of a bubble for AI? And of course, that could last an indefinite period of time, but just want you to be thinking about these things, right? Because other investors not doing that sort of work, not thinking through the what if scenarios are going to be the ones that get hurt. So of course, what I'm referencing here is the market cycle where you have just this extended base over time and then a big boom. And that's the peak of the hype right there. And then the collapse into the valley of despair and then return to the mean where it repeats again. So I want to show you what this looks like for Palantir. I created this image here. So this is when Palantir was private. Then they had their DPO right here. This is Palantir's stock chart on a monthly basis fit to this image. And there's the boom right there, the demo day hype, as I called it, and the collapse, the correction when all the things I just talked about occurred. And then we have this base, right? This is when you wanted to be loading Palantir stock. Now, it's easy to say that in hindsight, right? Other things could have gone wrong and that may not have been the right time to buy. But the point is, now that they're profitable, now that there's this, I would say, AI hype with a lot of expectations of it into the future, is now the time to be going all in on Palantir stock? I would say no. And what do I mean by that? I do not mean it's not okay to have Palantir as your only stock in your portfolio or a significant percentage of it. I don't think diversification works very well. It's totally fine if you want 5 to 10% a year returns. That's great, probably before inflation, right? I think you need to have one to two to three or two baskets of stocks where you pick your own stocks and the other basket. It really depends on your life situation where you would actually uh, just go into an index or something like that. But I do think... There's nothing wrong with 
buying your own stocks and having a high weight in them. However, you have to understand, as we just talked about, the stock market cycle, right? Palantir is coming out of that last correction, and it wasn't that long ago, really. It was just the beginning of last year when we were in that that despair, right? And so it, it's just that the base and the boom has happened so quickly for the stock that I want to make this video and say, I don't think it's the time to go all in, all right? Of course, the stock could continue higher. We've seen NVIDIA defy gravity. I'm not saying it isn't going higher. I actually do think it is going higher. However, you have to think from a risk reward perspective. If I didn't own any Palantir shares, I would not be going 100% into the stock at this point. I would buy some and I would make a plan for entering further into the future because you have to keep in mind, Isaac Newton said this, Newton's first law states that whenever a retail investor goes all in on a retail favorite stock, it causes a correction of at least 20%, right? This is just a fact. And <laughs> you'll be doing everyone a disservice by going all in at the top uh, because it will, it will hurt us all. So obviously just a joke, but I wanted to make this video because I think it's great that we have such a, an invested retail base that owns such a high percentage of their net worths in this stock. But for anyone that's new to the Palantir community, you don't want to be going all in when the stock has really never been above this valuation before for an extended period of time. You want to scale into it. Now, a lot of people love dollar cost averaging. I think you can, I think you can invest in larger chunks. You just have to do it at the right time and, it make, and making sure you understand the stock, where it is in the cycle, and what the fundamentals are when you're doing that. So I'm not saying it's a bad time to buy Palantir. I actually do think it's gonna continue higher. I don't wanna see anyone get hurt either. So hopefully this video was helpful. In the next video, I'm going to be going through a lot of the Wall Street research reports that have just come out and what Wall Street is thinking about Palantir's quarter and update all of you on that shortly. Until next time.